Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. I've been asked to do a video about um, growing cauliflower in cool season areas and what I've learned about it. So I thought that uh, this would be a good day to do that. I have been trying to grow cauliflower for probably close to half a dozen years and most of those years have been complete failures. So I've done a lot of trial and error learning. I am by no means an expert, but today I'm gonna to share with you the five things that I think are the most valuable things that I have learned about growing cauliflower in my short season climate. And I think most of these probably apply to all, all climates as well. But uh, my experience is here in a zone three. I'm starting to move into about a zone four, but um, yeah, we have a short season, but 110 growing days of, of like frost free time. And uh, it, can, it can go from very cold, to very hot to very cold in just a few months here. So the top five things that I think are the most important about growing cauliflower. Plant early. Cauliflower is a fairly cool tolerant crop. It's part of the brassica family and most brassicas are extremely cold hardy. Cauliflower is not quite as hardy as its cousins, but it can still be planted out into the garden before your average first frost. So if you're starting sets inside, you wanna be starting them around, you know, the beginning to middle of April at the, the latest. And after about four weeks, I'd say six at the most, you wanna be having them out in the garden. So my, Average uh, last frost date is May 24th, and uh, I aim to have my cauliflower out in the garden around the, the beginning of May. So um, I'm gonna start my sets indoors. Cauliflower, although it's a cool weather crop, actually prefers a little bit warmer temperatures to germinate. So when you're starting those seeds early, it does help to start them about 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, but I find that my home is usually around 22 and my grow room is usually 23 to 24. So that works well to get my cauliflower started off. And then um, they will grow just fine at cooler temperatures. So if you need to find a warmer space to get them germinated better for you, then you could do that. And then if, you, if it would be more convenient to have them in a cooler area, you can do that to have them grow the rest of the time. Then, you know, a couple of weeks before you plan to plant them out, um, as long as you're not gonna be getting any hard freezes or you can protect them from hard freezes, start um, hardening them off outside or keeping them in a, a cold frame. And then they can be planted into the ground, like I said, a couple of weeks before your average um, last frost date, as long as you're not forecast for any hard frosts. But they can take a mild frost. With regards to temperature, any prolonged freezing temperatures um, or any prolonged hot temperatures are going to affect how well they form ahead. Number two on my list would be soil. Cauliflower seems to prefer a firmer soil and a sweeter soil. Now, the reason from what I can tell of firming down the soil for your cauliflower is really just to prevent it from being thrashed around in the wind. These are big, heavy plants and they can be easily um, moved around by the wind. They have large leaves and that can be very damaging to that stem on the plant. So if you give them a nice firm base to be rooted down into, that can help to keep them just a little more solid in the ground and to help protect them from high winds. A sweet soil is a good way to help prevent club root. So club root is a soil borne disease. Um, and uh, the best way to help uh, keep it out of your, uh, your cauliflower plants is to lime the soil and that just makes the soil sweeter. They prefer a more neutral to, to alkaline soil and you can lime it. Um, some sources say it's best to do it in the fall. Some say, you know, just do it before you plant them. 
but just read your, your package directions and try to get like at least a neutral to slightly sweet soil. Liming your soil just gives you that little bit of extra help to help prevent club root. It's not going to kill the club root in your soil. Um, it just, and it, it helps prevent those uh, club root spores from entering the roots of the plant and uh, club root can be fatal to the plants. Club root lives in soil for a very long time. There's no way to actually eradicate it as long as it has a host. So you always should be uh, rotating your brassica crops and uh, the longer you can keep them, you know, the, the longer amount of uh, planting seasons that you can keep them out of one space, the better. Uh, club root is something that um, is is found to be an issue great from you know home gardeners to large agricultural uh, producers and the, really the the biggest uh, solution is to rotate your crops so just leave as many seasons as you can uh, before uh, introducing brassicas into a certain piece of your garden again the third thing that i think is uh extremely important and something that um, I really didn't realize at first and it took me a long time to figure out with cauliflower is how important good nutrition and watering is to these plants. They are heavy feeders. I didn't realize that, um, but they really, they need to be fed well. If you can put lots of compost into your planting bed before planting your cauliflower that will go a long way to helping them and side dressing the plants or working some just uh, all-purpose fertilizer in regularly throughout the growing season will help to feed your plants and help them to grow large and strong i think personally even more important than feeding them well is watering them well they need consistent moisture throughout the growing season you want to help keep the water moist, you know, but well drained, which is one of those gardening terms that we hear a lot and it can be a little confusing, but you want to be able to always have some moisture, kind of moisture that goes into the soil, but it drains out and there's more moisture coming in through the top on a regular basis. They need a cool root zone and that moisture will help them to have that cool root zone. But it's also water helps to get nutrients uh, moving um, through from the soil to the roots. And it's just, it's a very important thing for cauliflower. They, they need a lot of water. So a good heavy soaking of water at least once a week. Um, I have mine on drip and my cauliflower bed most summers and most of the time that uh, they're in there is getting some watering every day to get a good several inches of soil soaked around the root zone. Now, one thing that will go a large way to helping that is mulching your soil. And if you're mulching with a compost, that's even better because you're going to be replenishing the nutrients as it rains, it's gonna be washed down into the soil because they're gonna be taking a lot out of the soil. But it's also going to be helping to keep the moisture in the soil so it's not evaporating out and uh, helping hold moisture in. So lots of moisture, lots of food, um, and a mulch on top will go a long way for your cauliflower plants. Heat and sun. Cauliflower are one of those tough plants because they like sun. They want about six hours of sunshine a day, but they don't like heat. So you need to be able to plant them in a way that either they're on a shoulder season where they're getting the cooler temperatures of spring or autumn or where they're getting protection from the hottest part of the day. And in my zone where we have the, this short season and um, our shoulder seasons are really, they're quite cold generally for, for the length of time that you would need to grow a cauliflower. So really what I need to do is protect them from, from the sun. I always try to grow my cauliflower somewhere where I can give them some protection from the, the hottest part of the day um, whenever possible. And um, I usually have netting over top, which we'll get to later, which can also help protect them a little bit from that, that heat of the sun. So they want 
they want the sunshine hours, but they don't want the heat. So if you have a season long enough to be able to grow cauliflower in the spring before it gets really hot or in the autumn, you know, where the bulk of their, their growth happens um, as they're heading up after the, the very hot part of the year, that's the best. But if you don't have that option, then try and give them some protection. Now cauliflower greens do grow well in, in warmer temperatures but their heads don't. So some people um, who have a little bit of a longer autumn will find it beneficial to plant their seeds in the ground, you know, the end of July, early August, and then grow their plants more as a, a fall crop for cauliflower. We can have snow on the ground by the end of September and generally by the end of October. So I don't usually have enough time to actually grow cauliflower out that well in the fall, but, um, for those of you that uh, have a maybe a, a milder autumn, that's a good option. Another thing um, when it comes to sun and cauliflower is if you're growing um, the white-headed cauliflower especially, you may need to do something called wrapping. Um, some cauliflower might say that it's self-wrapping and some won't be. And what wrapping is, is just the leaves coming up around the curd or the head of the cauliflower and protecting it from the sun. Um, sunlight and heat hitting those uh, heads of cauliflower can discolor the cauliflower and give it a really strong taste um, and not a pleasant taste. So you need to find a way to um, cover the heads up. Most people will just take the outer leaves and either put a, um, an elastic around it or I like to use big, um, big clips that I buy at like the dollar store or some people, if they grow a lot of cauliflower, will even just break off large leaves and set them on top. I find that method doesn't work that well. We have a lot of wind here and they just blow away. Um, but whatever method you use, make sure that you are checking them, I would say daily. So you start wrapping them when the heads are like just a few inches, you know, five centimeters wide. And then you need to check them daily because those heads can, can uh, develop quite quickly especially if the weather is warm and uh, you don't want to leave them too soon so um, you need to find that optimal point of a nice large head that's nice and full and tight and um, left one day too long they can start to open up and and go bad on you so it's easy to forget about them when they're wrapped but you do need to open them up every day and just have a look and see where they are. Some people use color coding on uh, their elastics or their clips to know which ones are more mature than the rest so they know which ones to kind of keep a closer eye on. I find it just best just to check them every day. The very last and also one of the most important things is pest control. Cauliflower is prone to pests. The, uh, the cabbage butterflies love to lay their eggs on cauliflower and have their little babies grow up and eat the cauliflower. Um, flea beetles are a huge problem for me. Slugs and snails can get into your cauliflower. And I have some, I've heard of some people have a lot of trouble with aphids with their cauliflower. There are two things that I think work best for getting rid of pests on cauliflower. One and the best way is to get a very good netting. I have tried many different kinds of netting and the tighter the weave that you can get that still allows airflow and sunshine through, the better. Get it nice and big so it covers up the cauliflower bed and it goes well above the head of the cauliflower plant because if the butterfly can land on the netting and manage to lay an egg through the netting right onto a plant, it will do that. <laughs> and you want to be able to get it down, wrap down around the bottoms and uh, that'll help to prevent um, any of those moths or anything from getting in there. Um, another thing that can help prevent those moths is the use of BTK. That is a biological uh, pesticide uh, the stuff I use, you uh, mix with water and you spray it on. And um, I think last year was the first year I'd used it. And I think I sprayed it on my cauliflower maybe twice. 
Um, most of my cauliflower was netted, so I'm not sure that that was really necessary, but any brassicas that I had that weren't netted definitely kept the, uh, the cabbage moths at bay there. When it comes to slugs, snails, and flea beetles, I find they're a little bit harder to control because even with netting, they're probably going to be coming in through your soil. Um, if you're netted, netted um, with flea beetles, you can put sticky traps, um, like the ones that you would use for um, fungus gnats in your house, those yellow sticky cards. You can put those under the netting and they will catch the flea beetles um, without you know, being in danger of catching any of your beneficial insects that you don't want to, uh, to harm. Um, slugs and snails you can use, um, I think they're made out of copper, is it? The little slug pellets to help keep those under control or you can hand pick them. Um, you can hand pick the cabbage worms too, but uh, they can, that can get a little bit much. And as for aphids, um, I think if you have it well netted, they're not a real problem for me, but I think if you have it well netted, you probably won't see a huge aphid issue on your um, cauliflower. But I would say if you start to see them start to populate to, you know, spray them off with a, a good spray of the hose, or even I find um, just rubbing along the stem where the aphids are congre congregating, they're easily removed that way because they, they squish easily. So, you know, if you're squeamish, just put on a pair of gloves and just scrape them off and <laughs> they'll be gone. But I haven't had them be a real issue on my cauliflower, but the other things they can, they can get out of hand quickly. And I'll tell you, there is, it's not very appetizing to, to bring a cauliflower into the house and uh, as you're cutting it open to be finding slugs, snails, and cabbage worms inside. So the more that you can control outside, the less you have to pick off inside, the better. The biggest thing I've learned with growing cauliflower is that cauliflower don't like change. They want, for the most part, things to be very consistent throughout their lives and any great fluctuations in temperature, watering, anything really will um, drastically reduce your chance of getting a good head of cauliflower. So give them a nice consistent life and they'll be the happiest. So hopefully with those five things, you have found something in there to uh, maybe give you a little more confidence in trying cauliflower. It is just an absolutely amazing crop. Now that I have been able to harvest some of my own cauliflower and uh, enjoy it fresh from the garden, uh, anything from the store pales in comparison, I'll tell you that. It is a wonderful crop to grow. You know, it's, it's, uh, it comes in a few different varieties. So you can get white cauliflower and orange cauliflower and purple cauliflower, and uh, they can be fun to grow, delicious to eat, and pretty easy to freeze and store so that you have plenty uh, going through the season. So look at your packages, look for your um, days to maturity to see, you know, which, which ones would work best for your uh, climate and your, your area and get some cauliflower going so that you can enjoy some out of your garden this season. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.